He was 19, and his only weapon was a USB stick shaped like lip gloss. You know the type. Kids his age, unboxing iPhones, dancing in bedrooms, live streaming the mundanity of being alive in a world that feels already over. Alex wasn't different. Same acne along his jawline, same twitch handle, since he was 12, same jokes about everything being a simulation. The only difference was that on June 14th, 2023, while Europe slept, Alex walked into the control room of its largest nuclear reactor, alone, for 45 minutes. When he walked out, the launch codes were no longer where they were supposed to be. This isn't a story about terrorism, it's not about ideology. It's about a kid who was bored, and that might be the most terrifying part. The Olkiluoto Peninsula in Finland is where Europe buries its most dangerous secrets, spent uranium rots that will outlive your grandchildren. The Cherenkov 7 reactor sits on the Baltic Sea, a concrete cathedral of Cold War paranoia, retrofitted for the TikTok era. To get inside, you need security clearance, a key card that tracks your heartbeat, and a face that belongs. Alex had all three. Not because he stole them, because he was given them. His father, a safety inspector, pulled strings for the internship. Good for the CV, they said. Alex spent his days shadowing engineers who spoke in acronyms and his nights raiding in Fortnite, where his handle was Poo239, a chemistry joke no one got. The irony would be hilarious later. His supervisor, Yari, told investigators Alex was quiet. He did what he was told. I thought that meant he was learning. What Hari didn't know was that Alex had been mapping the reactor's digital architecture like a video game dungeon. Every firewall, every outdated SCADA system, every camera with firmware from 2017. He catalogued them in a notebook that looked like math homework. It was a walkthrough. The final boss was a file labeled Zenith Reboot on an air-gapped server in the primary control room. The file held the scram codes, the sequence that could emergency shut down the reactor's cooling system. In the wrong hands, they could trigger a meltdown that would make Chernobyl look like a campfire. In the right hands, well, what were the right hands? Alex didn't know, he just knew he could take them. June 14th was Midsummer Eve. Half of Finland was drunk, dancing under a sun that wouldn't set. Alex volunteered for the overnight shift. Let the old guys be with their families, he'd said, and they'd clapped his shoulder, grateful. The security team was skeletal. The senior engineer stepped out for a cigarette. The control room was his for 45 minutes. He'd timed it. He pulled the lip gloss USB from his pocket, cherry-flavored metallic pink, a gift from an ex-girlfriend. He plugged it into a terminal that was never supposed to accept external drives. But Alex had installed a driver three weeks earlier during a routine update. The system recognized it as a keyboard. The camera above recorded a 19-year-old leaning forward, typing. Nothing unusual. Interns type. What the camera didn't see was the data tunneling out of Zenith Reboot, compressed into a file called summer underscore project underscore final dot docs and vanishing onto that pink stick. It took 11 seconds. Alex removed the drive, capped it, dropped it in his pocket. He opened a browser, logged into Fortnite and played a match lost. Then he went home. The auction went live 48 hours later. Not on the dark web, Alex posted it in a private discord called Nihilism and Chill, where kids traded memes and pirated software. The starting bid was 50,000 euros. The description read, own the off switch to Europe's largest nuclear hard-on. Serious buyers only DM for proof. He thought he was being funny. Dr. Lena Petrova a cybersecurity specialist at the International Atomic Energy Agency, still gets quiet when she talks about the screenshot. It wasn't the price that alerted us, she says. It was the language. These kids don't want money. They want meaning. 
He was auctioning the apocalypse because he didn't know what else to do with his boredom. The IAA's digital sentinels caught the keyword Olkiluoto in a routine scrape. By the time Finnish special forces kicked in Alex's door, he was asleep with his gaming headphones on. The pink USB was on his nightstand next to a half-eaten bag of chips. The codes were still on it. He hadn't even encrypted them. At his trial, held in secret under Finnish national security laws, Alex was asked why he looked at the judge and said, I wanted to see if I could. Not for money, not for fame. Just to see if the system was as broken as everyone says. The prosecution called it sociopathy. His defender called it a symptom of a generation raised on fatalism, where the only rational response to an irrational world is to press the button and see what happens. He got seven years for aggravated endangerment of critical infrastructure. The judge said she wished she could give him less, but she needed to send a message. We are not ready for the kids who know the internet better than we know the world. Cherenkov 7 got a $400 million security overhaul. Every USB port was physically removed. The next generation of interns will be monitored by AI that tracks their eye movements, their keystroke rhythm, their heartbeat variants. But here's what the experts won't say. You can't patch human apathy. You can't firewall a generation that's already stopped believing in the future. I think about him sometimes, about the moment he capped that pink USB stick, lost his Fortnite match, and closed his eyes. Did he feel powerful? Or did he feel the weight of the world he'd just downloaded? The weight of every containment door, every decision made by men, now dead and buried under concrete and regret? We want our monsters to look like monsters. We want manifestos and evil laughs. But sometimes they're just kids who got an internship because their dad made a phone call. Sometimes they're just bored. And sometimes, on a night when the sun never sets and the world feels far away, they reach into their pocket and realize the most dangerous thing you can own is the proof that nothing you do really matters. Maybe that's the real launch code, not the numbers. Just the certainty that you could, so you did.